Here's what I want to talk about for just a few minutes. We're going to talk about developing leaders and why we should do it. Why should you develop leaders? Why? The first reason that I can think of is that Jesus did it. If you look at uh, Matthew chapter 4, Jesus has just been baptized by John the Baptist. He's just uh, been in the desert and been tempted by the devil. He's about to begin his ministry, but before he heals anybody, before he preaches a sermon, before he teaches on the steps of, of the synagogue, Jesus walks by the, the, the lake, the sea, and he sees two brothers fishing. And he says, you follow me, I'm gonna teach you to be fishers of men. And immediately they drop everything and start following him. He sees two other brothers working with their dad, fixing the nets. He says, you follow me, I'm gonna make you fishers of men. Immediately they drop everything. They leave their father and follow Jesus. Before he did anything else in ministry, he chose men that he was going to develop. He knew his time was short. He knew he didn't have long. He knew it wasn't going to be uh, an endless amount of time on earth. But he chose men to develop first. That's what he did first in ministry. We should do it too. Second reason, we got to take care of the bride. How many of you guys that are married, that left your wife, maybe some kids at home, uh, to come here for this week. How many of you uh, called your wife last night, you got back to your hotel and said, hey babe, you doing okay? How are the kids today? Are all the doors locked? What'd you guys do for dinner? Do you need anything? Can I help you in any way? How many of you guys did that last night? A few of you, okay? How many of you, if you went to the doctor, doctor says, you've got three months to live, then you're done. How many of you would make sure with everything in your power that your wife or your husband is taken care of after you're gone. You're gonna save every dime. You're gonna try and scrape together. You're gonna try and pay off the house. You're gonna try and make sure your, your kid's college is taken care of. You're gonna take care of your bride, yeah? And I think it's on us as, as worship pastors, as leaders in the church, to care about the bride. Let me let, let you in on a little secret. Nobody else is gonna care about worship leadership for your people like you're going to care about it. The pastor might care about it a little. Maybe the family pastor, maybe some of your congregation, maybe some of the musicians in your band. Nobody is gonna care about it as much as you care about it. So you shouldn't be thinking about who's gonna lead your people. Maybe not when you're uh, gone from that position, but even being here this weekend, if you're staying over in Austin, how many of you guys are staying here on Sunday and someone else is leading at your church? One of it. You know who's leading, don't you? Is it somebody you've trained, somebody you have confidence in, somebody that you know is going to stand on that stage and shepherd your sheep well? It's on us, man. We've got to take care of the bride. We've got to give her good things. We can't just get that, that one guy who uh, can kind of sort of play guitar. He'll be okay to fill in while I'm gone. It's on us to care about the bride. I'm not leading. This is my campus. This is where I lead on Sundays. I'm not leading here this Sunday, but I know that Dietrich, where is Dietrich? Dietrich's leading here Sunday. I have full confidence in Dietrich's pastoral skills to speak with clarity, to lead with confidence, to pastor anyone who comes up to him afterwards. I have full confidence in Dietrich to lead our people well, to shepherd the bride this Sunday. It's on us to take care of the bride. And we gotta want the best for our bride. Last reason that I think that we should, it's not the last reason, it's, it's one of the three that I feel like are really important. We're called to replicate. That's a word that I, I feel like has been a buzzword in church over the last few years. And, and usually repli replicate is always kind of synonymous with discipleship. But we're called to replicate because we're only as good as our last day, right? If you get in a plane crash and you die on the way home, you're only as good as the last day that you spent here. And really, really, when you think about it, the only thing that you can do on, uh, on this earth with a lasting eternal value is invest in someone else, is to, to give a piece of yourself to someone else. 